Happy Friday, everybody. Kat Siebert here with another Friday devotion. For the month of March, we are going to be looking at Holy Week, right? The last week of Jesus's life um, before he dies and is resurrected. And my goal in prayer is that as we look at these kind of last few days of his earthly life, that we would do kind of devotions that families could do together, that you could talk about um, with others, that you could share, um, but that would really be maybe a little more experiential um, in nature and get you thinking about all the things God has done for us in a different way. So today I want to look at some of the events of Monday, Thursday. Now, we did this in kids ministry this past Sunday, and it was a uh, so fun. Here's what I love. I love when we uh, do something different and you watch how people react, right? When you come up with an idea and you see who's on board or who's not, or who's excited or who's scared and who's nervous. And I have to imagine that based on scripture, these same things happened in Jesus time. So I want to look at John chapter 13. And here's what it says. Just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around them. And then we hear about Simon Peter saying, Jesus, no, you're not going to wash my feet. And there's an interaction between uh, both of them. Um, And then verse 12, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes, his outer clothing, returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and I am rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verily, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So here's what I want to talk to you about today. Wash some feet. Now, maybe you're asking, Kat, is that literal or is that figurative? And the answer is yes. So in kids' time this past Sunday, I actually washed their feet. Now, it was interesting to see the reactions of kids because we think feet are dirty, right? We don't like feet. We don't touch feet. They're kind of weird. Um, And they're not something that we do, right? But wash some feet. So I, at kids time, was able to do that and to wash their feet. And there's something about a leader or somebody in charge taking that kind of position, right? And we were able to talk about how uh, we have shoes and sidewalks and cement. So how our feet are even different than those in biblical times, that their feet were very different. It was customary that when you came to somebody's house, that a servant washed your feet. Right, so back then it meant something different, but here's what's still true today. That it says that Jesus had power, right? All the power that God has given him. And in the next sentence it says, he became a servant, right? He washed their feet. And so we know that with God's power, he washed feet. And we also know that Jesus washed Judas's feet, right? We know that this is like the last day, few hours that Jesus is here, and he chose to wash Judas's feet, even knowing that Judas had already agreed to betray him. So if you've never washed somebody's feet, do it. Whether it's your kids, your spouse, somebody else, experience that. One, to be the person washing the feet, and two, being the person um, having your feet washed, and talk through what it means. The other piece of it is serving is a way for us to love others, right? Culturally, that type of feet washing meant something different back then. And maybe you're like, Kat, I'm not going to literally wash feet. Then figuratively do it. Then look and think that nothing is under you. And what are ways that you can serve somebody? And then ultimately that by serving others, we're loving them. How can you love somebody else through the way you serve them? Whether it's your neighbors, your coworkers, you name it, the people in your world, how can you serve them this week and this month that they may see God's love through your actions? Because Jesus modeled that for us, that he 
served others and he loved them even though he was their master right he showed them what it's like to serve and love others may you this week love and serve somebody and see what that's like that they may know god's love because of you let's pray jesus thank you for God, for the examples in scripture that you give us, for the way that you model what we should do and the ways that we should humble ourselves and love others, help us this week to love somebody like you love them. God, we just pray for the people in our lives that we can serve them and that we can love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to you this week. See you Sunday.